Ratna Rounds, episode number 171. Asteroid Hyalosis. Vitrectomy for asteroid hyalosis is rarely necessary, but may be indicated for impaired visualization of the retina, even with alternative imaging modalities, for application of laser photocoagulation, such as PRP, or more rarely when the asteroid bodies are visually significant. Vitrectomy in cases of asteroid hyalosis can be challenging due to the frequent absence of a PVD or due to the presence of vitreous schesis. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Ignacio Navarro, a first-year vitreoretinal fellow at Clinica Ophthalmologica del Caribe in Barranquilla, Colombia. He and his attending, Dr. Luis C. Escoff, perform a vitrectomy on a patient with visually significant asteroid bodies. They use triamcinolone staining and intraoperative OCT to nicely highlight vitreous anatomic findings. Thank you, Drs. Navarro and Escoff, for sharing this case. Okay, this patient also has a visually significant cataract, and so Dr. Navarro is going to perform a combined phaco vitrectomy, starting first with phaco emulsification and lens implantation, and now going on to placing trocars for the parse plane of vitrectomy. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful with an unsutured clear corneal wound, since the pressure exerted on the globe during trocar implantation can open that wound and potentially shallow the anterior chamber. Now you can see Dr. Navarro performing a core vitrectomy, and the core vitreous is very nicely highlighted by the presence of those asteroid bodies. Now it's really important in these eyes to always check for a posterior vitreous detachment since it's rarely present in patients with asteroid hyalosis. And you can see here that Dr. Navarro is very astutely instilling some triamcinolone into the eye to check for the posterior hyaloid. And you can see here that there's some uh, staining of not only the vitreous overlaying the optic nerve, but this uh, ovoid area that's been stained uh, over the macula. And so that's highlighting the area of the posterior hyaloid that's overlying the macula. And this is an area which is called the premacular bursa. So let's just go over these anatomic findings because the combination of the triamcinolone and the intraoperative OCT very nicely sh uh, points out a number of posterior vitreous an anatomic landmarks. Again, we see the premacular bursa, which is a fluid-filled space between the posterior hyaloid face and the macula. We also see cloacase canal, or the hyaloid canal, which is the path of the hyaloid artery during development in utero that remains as a space or remnant after the hyaloid artery retracts. And last, we see the space of Martigiani, which is the space at the posterior end of cloacase canal, which is also a remnant following hyaloid artery retraction. Okay, now carrying on with the case, Dr. Navarro is now going to induce the PVD. So the uh, edge of the vitreous is nicely stained with the triamcinolone, and using the vitreous cutter, he's going to uh, aspirate maximally right at the edge of the optic nerve, and then lift up in an anteroposterior fashion to detach the macula from the posterior pole. And then using the vitreous cutter, he's going to propagate the PVD towards the periphery, utilizing the turbulence of the vitreous cutter uh, to propagate the vitreous separation. And now he's going to go ahead and shave peripherally with some scleral depression. The trocars are removed, uh, and those wounds appear to be watertight, and that concludes the case. So here's some take-home points. Asteroid hyalosis is rarely visually significant, and fundus evaluation can be achieved using fluorescein angiography, autofluorescence, and OCT. Now, indications for vitrectomy for asteroid hyalosis include uh, impaired retinal visualization, the need to apply laser photocoagulation, or if the asteroid bodies are visually significant, as was the case in the surgery. A PVD in eyes with asteroid hyalosis is rarely present, and PVD induction can be challenging. Additionally, the surgeon should be aware of the possibility of vitreous schesis. Staining with triamcinolone, as was demonstrated in this case, is critical to ensure that the PVD has been successfully induced. And sometimes instruments other than the vitreous cutter, such as forceps, may be necessary to elevate the posterior hyaloid. Triamcinolone-assisted PVD induction was nicely demonstrated by Dr. Navarro in this case, as well as the intraoperative visualization of posterior vitreous anatomic landmarks using intraoperative OCT. And we want to thank Dr. Navarro and Dr. Escoff for sharing this case, and thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website, and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.